start with a quote this time. Okay. Yeah, because this is inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Gaia, message. Actually, this is a message from... Our quote book. A quote book. Yeah. If you go to the oh. website, analybenz.com, mm -hmm. and you go to the bottom of this page there, it says something along the lines of, Nally Ben's quote book. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you can get, a... get the physical book as well. Yeah, you can <laughs> get the, the book. Store. Of course, that's where you get it. Yeah. But you can also get a quote from it. Our quote mm -hmm. today was... Go ahead, read it, honey. Feeling guilty is a waste of time. Feeling responsible is something entirely different. Something else entirely. <laughs> <laughs> you quoted yourself wrong. <laughs> I did quote myself wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. But think about that for a minute. Something else entirely. Yeah, that was, there's, there's a lot of quotes in this book that like give you that. Let me think about that for a minute. This is one of those that it moves you out of. Uh, low frequency, mm -hmm. right? Which is guilt, yeah. blame, yeah. shame, yeah. basically a low frequency mm -hmm. into a higher frequency, which is I'm responsible for. Yeah. And responsible from the perspective of that I have the ability to respond to this. Right. 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 Here's a co-creative um, something. It was made with uh, me included with them. Yeah. It isn't outside of me. It's right. me and them. Yeah. And uh, my input brings it about, and their input brings it about, and I'm able to alter it. Yeah, I can change my mind for mm -hmm. one thing. I mm -hmm. can stop, reboot. I can reevaluate. I can do a lot of things. Process the negative energies around it, right? Right. Yeah. Because if it's a thing that you're feeling guilty for, right? Or any other negative energies for? Yeah. Well. This one specifically is feeling guilty is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So what kind of things have you ever felt guilty for? Mm, I'll have to really dig into that one. <laughs> um, thoughtlessness. When I've done something out of reaction rather than response. And then that hurts me or others mm -hmm. that yeah makes you feel guilty a little bit later yeah like and it's it's not like oh no i'm so sorry blah 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 it's not that type of guilt kind mm -hmm. of energy it's more like oh shoot yeah like oh oops dang it oopsie a little bit of oopsie yeah should have known better than doing that I, or i do know better than that yeah so looking at well why did i what what happened Maybe sometimes you can evaluate and say, oh, I know what. I was like uh, trying to pretend I don't have a headache or my body's in a great deal of pain and I'm going to just yes. plop my way through the day like nothing's wrong, but there is plenty wrong. <laughs> right. Right. So how would you change way. it? You can change your mind. And, uh, and uh, not pretend it. Yeah. Not put on a front. Right. Stiff up a lip and all that. <laughs> That's a good social program, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it works for uh, probably in 1889 or 1885 to create, you know, if you're going to have, let's say, uh, I don't know, a little kiosk in the mall. I'm going to make <laughs> it about $250,000 worth of kiosk with ornate tumblers and elephants trouting and spouting water out the top of them through an endless... Fountain powered by nothing but, I guess, thought. <laughs> You're talking about the, the yeah. International World Expo in Paris, aren't you? Jeez. That's absurd. Yeah, completely absurd. It is. Yeah. Well, we have been looking at that that topic quite a lot in the past few weeks. It keeps popping in through yeah. lots of different angles. It does. The re resets and... Yeah, the even in the book I'm reading about the Bible right now, it's called The Naked Bible, I think. Mm, yeah, you read me a little bit of, on that. 
I was talking about great resets and how they'd been in Goodness. the past since, oh no, thousands of years, a cycle of thousands of years of these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. And that um, control of the past or the memory of the past is what creates the present and the future, kind of mm -hmm. a little bit like that. Yeah. 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 So one of the things we were watching a little bit ago is all of the uh, buildings all around the planet, which was kind of what I was also alluding to when I say that, you know, go to Russia and you look, guess what? It's all the same. The truck's the same. <laughs> they have a wheel, they have a tire, they have an engine run on diesel. Yes. And they have a steering wheel. The terrain is completely, completely and utterly and totally different than where we are. But There's no reason at all to come up with the same answer to that problem. How right. are you going to get from here to there through this I know, 10 foot deep of mud. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll just drive a truck like they have in the USA. <laughs> well, what, where? <laughs> what was that idea come from? Yeah. Well, well, similarly, we were looking at all of the world. They have basically um, these large like buildings that are now being used for a thing like a post office or I know. like a train DMV station. Or train stations DMV, are a really good one. Yeah. And they're. Inordin inordinately ornate yes, and massive mm -hmm. and constructed of materials well, well, well beyond what we use today to construct our normal Anything. stuff. Anything, yeah. Know? Just a insanity. And allegedly built within six months or two years. Yeah, of course, built for, super duper fast. For, for a world expo. For expo. Well, in the case of the expo, yeah. But mm -hmm. even then around the world, they have these uh, capital buildings. Yes, they do. We were looking at one capital building in Russia, and yes. I thought that was the White House. The White House. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Russia? Wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? And it's always a Greco-Roman. Yeah. It's always the same arches and pillars. And the domes. And the domes. Mm -hmm. And on the top of the domes, a spire with a ball coated in gold or some very good metals. Mm-hmm. For apparently the same reasons, like everywhere on the planet, they think that looks the coolest. But it doesn't look the coolest, does it? I mean, it's, it's neither it the coolest. The it's definitely not the most easy to build. Can you? Right. Well, we've been trying to build a woodshed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it takes a lot of money and a lot of effort and a lot of skills. Uh, and a lot of time. Uh, and a good amount of time for a little, for what relatively a simple thing, you know? Yeah. Made out of wood that we've already bought. We didn't even have to cut the tree down. I know. We didn't have to cut the tree down. We didn't have to pack the tree out of the woods. Uh -huh. We didn't have to take it to a saw mm -hmm. thing that's giant enough to handle that giant of a log. Mm -hmm. Or according to, you know, the pictures, go get a couple of really, really strong guys who are mm -hmm. eating a can of beans split between them <laughs> for the day. <laughs> And a giant long hand saw goes, yeah. somehow saw all the way through that thing, all the way down to the end. Right. And then cut it in the, I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to do any of that. We just went to Home Depot and bought a piece of wood that's two inches by four inches. And it's like, <laughs> and how are we going to stick this to that? We didn't have to go dig anything out of the dirt. We didn't have to no. melt down no ro rocks to get some steel and iron or whatever. And For the nails. Roll it out round and flat down to mm -hmm. the end. Now, literally, I mean, just talking about it, you think, yeah, that's that nobody had to do that. But the boat that I have for fishing, mm -hmm. when they went fishing, they had to bend the hooks, sharpen the end, and bang the end of it flat to tie it on with a piece of string to the rope. It's not like they just butt hooks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they did have to do that to some of their nails. And sometimes they didn't even have nails. They had to make their nails out of wood, you know, mm -hmm. drill holes and stick the wood through and use strange joinery techniques. But anyways... We got it easy. Mm -hmm. And even with it as easy as it could possibly be, it's still quite a lot to it. Yeah. And so we know how long it takes to build something. <laughs> you know, we know how long it takes. Yeah. And it just doesn't make sense. It's not, it doesn't make sense that in Some this world expo, those things were built and in the amount of time they said, and then there they were. I mean, some of the photographs on the 1889 Paris one, they show the people walking around uh, in horse and carts. And then you look at the grandiose buildings all around them that they allegedly they allegedly built in less than two years or two years or something. And you go, where did they get the materials? 
how did they bring I mean, all of those buildings all at once? It was several acres. Um, to build it and then to that level of detail and that craftsmanship. Right. And some of it doesn't look new. A lot of it doesn't look new. And then they pulled it. Most of it they demolished. Right. Yeah, just attach some cables and pull it over and pulverize it, I guess, and then mm -hmm. cart it off, even though it's just the carting off the pile of junk. That would have been... Would have been an immense task immense in task, itself, yeah. right? And the technology, you can see them pulling the stuff down with, was like very primitive. <laughs> a few horses and a choir. Yeah, so... Yeah. yeah. Something yeah. isn't exactly right. Right. There's some, somebody's doing something around here. Yeah, and where's the budget for it? Well, that's one of the things, like the budget for it. So you get a, you go to the mall today, anywhere in the world, and in the middle of the mall... There's a little round things, you know, glass cases with the watches in it or to fix your mm -hmm. iPhone in it or whatever. And you look at the glass case and you say, yeah, that was probably, you know, $100, $200 worth of cases, maybe 1000 or 2000 on the uppy side. Mm -hmm. Cheap and there's a <laughs> chipboard, bend, yes. you know, thin glass and tin because it's, it's built for it to be as cheap as possible because you're selling shit in the middle of the mall. In the mall. Right. So how much money are you going to spend on that? Mm -hmm. You don't have like a Grand Central Station. You're going to be there for a hundred years, and you're going to pay it off over fifty. You know, <laughs> so you have a really beautiful thing. It's going to attract everybody. But in this, in this cases, these cases, those those little kiosks in the center of a mall were in finer by far than anything I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah, they were out. Standing. Even if you were having it for a hundred years, it was more over the top than you would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Just the little arch. Here's my little stand. Yeah. Just the little arch. It's probably a year's worth of craftsmanship in carving mm -hmm. steel and stone. Yeah. And even a chair. Yeah, those chairs are magnificent. Yeah. Give me a break. So that was a good thing is the question about the budget. At that time, did things not cost anything? <laughs> and if it took a transport guy didn't cost anything. Two Labor years didn't to cost make anything. it, you don't have to pay that guy, or because of, I mean that was that was craftsmanship. There it wasn't just it was craftsmanship yeah, to the yeah. degree that it probably doesn't even exist. Um, maybe the chainsaw carver on the side of the road, he's pretty <laughs> talented, but yeah. even even he, with all of his skill, couldn't build that. Right. So there's that disconnect between what you see, the story you're told, and what you know it must have taken to make it happen, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So one of the things that we're experiencing now kind of related to that is our, um, our ability to do things, like our energy that we have. Yeah. We'll watch some, uh, well... Our friends that were helping me dig the trench from our house down to the road. Road. We hired them, and he looked at it. Remember, he looked at me, walked mm -hmm. it with me, and he dug into the ground level. He says, "Oh, no problem. We can do this." Mm -hmm. And I looked at him like, <laughs> really? "How long? A year?" <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "No, we can do it. If you need it, like in a day or two, I can go get some friends." We're talking a quarter mile of digging down a forest hill yeah. with roots and trees and stones and yeah. all that kind of stuff, right? So I was a bit a bit in disbelief, but I'm like, okay, let's see what happens, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, better than the alternative, which is we're so, going to have no electricity. We're going to have to get some <laughs> hamsters on a wheel to start making the electricity for our house or yeah. generators or something because, the you know, the, the inspector wasn't going to allow us to have a wire. Right. No, no extension cords allowed in the woods. Mm -hmm. And then he did it, and uh, yeah, within a week, they were done. And uh, just walking down it and walking up it is about all you got. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You. Yeah, me. Yeah. And then, yeah, at the end of the fourth day, you know, I was feeding them. They were tired. They were tired. It's like, whew, this is a lot of work. I haven't done this for a while. Yeah. But they weren't um, crawling. No, they were not crawling. <laughs> So similarly, this level of attention to detail and craftsmanship and ability and um, 
I mean, even the desire to, I would like a chair to sit on. Mm -hmm. We have four over here, came with our house. Yeah. And they're nice. Yeah. I like them. Mm -hmm. They are one-tenth of one percent of what those chairs were. Yes, that's true. Perhaps one-tenth of one percent Maybe. of the chairs that we were seeing. Yeah. And those are the ones you would sit on it when you're riding on the train. Right. <laughs> have anybody on the train lately? <laughs> Does anybody want to take the train chair home? And where to where sit do these on? trains go? I mean, what happened to them? You know, it's like yeah. What about that moving, moving sidewalk? Yeah, in Paris, a <laughs> moving really sidewalk. Cool. And where did the power for that come from? And yeah. where did the power come from for lighting the entire expo? And also, where did the power come from for all the fountains? Yeah, we're looking at the fountains, in too. And the fountains are squirting a significant a amount of water. water. And a lot of them, like so many fountains. Everywhere you go. Everywhere. And the people's dress, the clothes they're wearing. Everyone had a hat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the hats that the women had were... Very elaborate. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I know we've heard... They had a, fi a fixation with hats, but mm -hmm. those are well beyond, well beyond. And I remember, like, I have this memory, I don't know where it comes from, but I remember those buildings, mm -hmm. and I used to travel a lot, probably when I was a kid, you know, I used to, in England when I was 12, and school children had free travel in the, uh, tra in the uh, tra trains and buses and things in England. Mm -hmm. And I would often take a train down to London. It was quite a few hours. And I would walk around and I would go to the museums and palaces and things like that. And the, it, it still had, if you touch the, the, the displays or the walls, the stairs, mm -hmm. it still had a type of charm around it, like an energy field of charm. Mm. Like you touch it and you could feel that energy. And in 2016, when you and I went there, I was touching it and feeling for it, and it was gone. Right, I remember it was you like, said that. Yeah, it was gone. It was no longer there. The charm like it was gone. No it was longer almost tapped like in or connected or linked. Something was gone, and it was like, it was all, it felt cheap or like transient and not energized. It didn't feel luxurious or precious or anything like that. It just felt, eh. You know, a bit of wood on the side of the road type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Same with the palace. Remember, we went to the palace in... Uh, Spain. Was that in Spain? Yeah. And we walked through. It was like, ugh. It was dingy, even. Yeah, it was dingy. Yeah. yeah. Dingy isn't the word you use when you, um, you know, describe your palace. Exactly, yeah. But that was dingy. Yeah. Very strange. Right. It kind of um, brings me to the thought that the conception, the idea, the very uh, foundational idea we have for what the reality is, is off. Mm -hmm. Like how things come to be isn't like correct. Mm. That our memory of things, the memory of things that we've been raised with, Somewhere it's like um, disjointed. Mm -hmm. So we we carry along a set of uh, limitations that, for instance, here, if you want to build something, it goes this way, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. You go get this, you have it delivered, you screw it in this way, you put this stuff in there, you put this on the outside, that's how everything's built. That's the way you built it. And we know for sure, if you go to a different country, that that set of instructions is different. Mm -hmm. Like in Spain, I was watching somebody build a house, and it had to do with steel and concrete and mm -hmm. <laughs> these guys with uh, cranes and things. And mm -hmm. there's a big pallet full of bricks and stuff. Yeah, stuff that you like look now. And you live, if we if that was delivered up to our yard right here, we'd be looking at like now. What do we do with it? <laughs> we don't even have the directions, you know. Right. Or uh, that. That set of instructions that we just assume that's how you do it, even though we know there's other ways to do it, this is the way we do it around here, right. that creates what we'd have around here. Mm -hmm. Everyone has around here. So similarly, when we think about building a chair or going to get a chair, we have an idea in our head as 
a longer set of instructions. In this place, we have you plant a whole bunch of the same trees and you cut them down before they have a chance to mature. Ship to China. And over there, they have some magic <laughs> that doesn't matter how much it costs you to put it on a truck and drive it to the port and put it on the ship and then ship it all the way over there and unload it and take it to a factory that you built out of nothing. Somehow, that's cheaper than uh, taking that wood and doing something with it here. You just ship it all the way over there. And then mm -hmm. they build something like a chair out of it, mysteriously in a giant factory full of a mysterious number of people doing the mysterious things. And then it comes back cheaper by a lot than yeah. what you could have built here with. <laughs> yeah. That's how you get a chair. Mm. That's the created way that we have to get a stuff. And so the whole um, how you even make a chair has been it kind of exported. We don't have the technology to make a chair. Mm. I mean, we can, and there are old world shops, and they make one chair a year or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not like shipping them to every Walmart right. in the U.S. And at uh, the price that they would sell you their chair, yeah, it's not going to be, there's a money thing there, right? Mm -hmm. The money is the chi, the ability to do the energy. So the amount of chi you have available to pay for a chair is an inconse inconsequential number. It's like, how much for a chair? $10, $20? How much for a toaster? How much is a toaster? $30 maybe? Mm. Yeah, $20, $30. Even conceiving of making a toaster. Us making a toaster? Us make a toaster from what we have around us. It's not going to look like a toaster. No, it's not. It's not going to even be made out of metal unless we found some to salvage off the beach off of something <laughs> that's broken, right? Yeah. If we could go to a place that had metal and go get it, could we make the shape of our toaster over there very mm, easily? No, I don't think so. No, it would take us a while. It would take us a while just to get one panel the right curve and yeah. shape to match, right? Yeah. I mean... And something to mold all the plastic as well. The plastic, yeah. We're going to have to work on that. Board, the and the little board. lever and the spring. Do you recall we were watching the boy hook up three electric or three uh, boat motors onto his little tiny dinghy? Yeah. Little five horse, three motors of five horse because yes. he wanted to have a little version of the fancy right. million dollar three uh, motors, yeah. that Florida giant speedboats. Yeah. Just manufacturing the thing that makes it go into gear and out of gear. <laughs> it even took him. He's like, wow, that took me a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there isn't $20 worth of attention. You could put into doing that toaster. No, you you don't have you don't have that. So there's a there's a um, a line from chi energy twenty dollars, how much that means to us, and toaster or any other item. We can't uh, spend that much energy thought on it. It's a little, do you see what I'm trying like to say? Like a disconnect, say? right? There's a disconnect between yeah. value and cost and energy and thought and mm -hmm. doing doing ability. Mm -hmm. So to some degree, we are um, you're handicapped because, well, why would you spend any attention on toaster or manufacturing metal or plastic or toaster stuff mm -hmm. when for maybe for 15 minutes worth of thinking or maybe five minutes worth of thinking, you have more than enough money to buy 10 toasters? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Right. So similarly with chair, some time place in the world i mean imagine a chair was a throne a throne for the king or the queen or the ruler or the executive that's a probably expensive chair and a lot of thought and time and process went into it huh? mm -hmm. and in people's houses that the thought for a chair maybe it was more what or, do you mean do you think what i mean is um we how much consideration do we give to a chair mm -hmm. besides does it look okay right and not that is the most amazing chair i've ever sat in, in my life we don't give it that much attention mm -hmm. but it looks like in the 1800s they did mm -hmm. give it so much attention that it was like the only thing they thought about for a year or two is this chair and this arm of the chair <laughs> and how i'm going to meddle it around it i mean 
all of that. That took so much tension. Or, or it took the same amount for a culture or civilization that was so advanced that a very ornate and what would be impossible to build expensive chair was as inconsequential as a chair is now. Yep. One or the other, right? <laughs> One or the other. Yeah. Well, at any rate, it causes you to think. And if you aren't getting it, go look. Mm. That's one of the important things you know, is just go look at what there yeah, was. And yeah. then you make your own mind about how that goes. And then remember, um, there's a story about how that came that you can look up. And the story will satisfy you very surface-like. You'll mm -hmm. say... Oh, yeah, because they had like a entire different kind of society and they had people that devoted their entire lives to building chairs and they had a different system of education, you know, it was uh, mentors and mentoring. And so when you got born, if you got born to the chair maker, you're a chair maker forever. Mm. You can't ever think of anything but chairs. And your dad was a chair maker. Your dad's dad was a chair maker. Uh, or maybe you're the fifth son and the fifth sons always have to go to make chairs or some <laughs> story, you know. Mm. And so you're like, oh, okay, that sounds quaint. <laughs> That's why the chairs are so perfect. <laughs> I don't think so. There's more to it. Yeah. Yeah, with that skill or that item, it's very interesting to look at. I remember some of the furniture in my grandparents' house, the Almada house in Chile. The, the furniture that they had brought with them from Spain, um, where their parents had, not them, was radically different to mm -hmm. anything that was quote-unquote modern. Mm. And part of it is the ornateness of it, but also the solidity of it. It was so solid, like nothing could break it. And it would last, right? It, would something, it, it was pieces of furniture that would last you forever. And... That, yeah, but it was so beautiful and so solid. It was insanely solid and beautiful. And then the, the other part that it reminds me of is when I was in Ecuador. Um, I visited Ecuador a few times. And we went to a village. They, they still do the guild system mm -hmm. that you can find in Spain. Also, that a whole city or town will do one craft. So there's a town with the guild of the potters, for example, and everything right. pottery and houseware and everything, like kitchenware, you buy there. Mm -hmm. And the one that I went to was the woodwork, woodworkers one. And that's where you could find that level of craftsmanship. It, and the stuff was not expensive. And it was beautiful, beautiful and solid and long lasting. And we're talking to one of the craftsmen. He was saying, yeah, I go into the woods and I look, I only, we only work with fallen wood, like the, the wood that naturally falls in the wood in the forest. And we take part of it. We let it sit there for two or three years and then we go and harvest it. And then we build all these things out of it, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and he had been taken, um, people from the Vatican had come to the village and took, talk to him, just to talk to him to come and restore some of the items at the Vatican. Some of the statues and some other things. Mm -hmm. And even other things, you know. And they took him, oh, with his, you know, being paid and everything. He was gone for years uh, from his family and everything. So they took him. And when, when I met him with his friend of mine at the time, it became clear he was the incarnation of a major craftsman that we all know mm -hmm. painted the Vatican ceilings and things. Right. And did crafts and sculptures and things. And it was clear. And then when we heard that story, it was like, oh, yeah, that was a validation of it. Right. Well, that, that makes sense. sense. Right. Yeah, that it made sense. Well, that they are aware of it also. Isn't that amazing? Right. They were aware of it. Yeah. So they had... The ability to know of it and to track it yeah. and to find. Yeah. Because it's like when he said, I don't know why. I mean, you know, there's millions of craftsmen around the world. Why pick me? And I can't talk about what work I worked on because it was, you know, it's top secret. But, you know, it was major. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then they wanted him to stay and eventually he said, no, I'm going back home. And he left. But you touch his sculptures, I mean, especially the, the ones he makes of the Virgin Mary. Um, and also he had some other sculptures of nature, spirits and things. Mm -hmm. And they're alive. Like, they're already sentient. They're amazing. And this, and his his furniture and other things. Uh, I mean, he has a workshop, and there's three or four men working there, but you can always tell which ones he did, the ones that he made. Right. And, you know, part of what you're describing is a reincarnated master who's still doing much the same that he was, only in a different environment. Mm -hmm. Probably a different environment. Oh, definitely different. But also, the only environment, probably very few of the in the world that, that still allows it. That would bring him to it. be. Yeah, that, that allows he it. could exist in. Yes. Right? Because, like, if he were and continue here, craft. he wouldn't have access to the material. Not the material, or the, train, the trade, or the training, to teach nothing. his body, right. nothing. And if he was here, he wouldn't have, probably, access to the... There wouldn't be a market for the stuff. To, no. to do while he was training his body, mm -hmm. you know, it's like halfway good masterpieces, <laughs> maybe, mm -hmm. unless he started with masterpieces from the beginning, but probably he had a little evolution to it, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. So there were a lot of orchestrations to bring him to the point where he could master his craft again and, and do it mm -hmm. unfettered. Yeah. It makes... Um, it does bring about some of the same thoughts that I have about our uh, friends that dug the trench. I know it's digging a ditch. I mean, have you ever heard of World War One trench warfare? Yes. And everyone had to dig that trenches, and that's like, mm -hmm. have you seen those trenches? Yes. On photographs, not in real life. I haven't seen the real You've life. You never ones. walked the land where they were, or they don't no. have any more? I don't know. I haven't. I don't. I've never. They might have areas where they kept them, but. I haven't been there, and but I have seen in photographs and things like that. Yeah, that seems like uh, clearly a superhuman level of work too. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this trench, I mean, even the uh, well digger, he's in his fifties, sixties, about that. He's been around and he's got a great deal of energy. He's really good, strong, well digging, well putting together expert kind of a guy mm -hmm. and he's the best uh digger trencher on his uh in his workforce and all of his he has kids that are working for him his own kids and he has other guys employees and all that and if it comes to digging a 10 foot long trench to go from like a house to a pipe or something he's like I'm the fastest and the best at it and I'm 60 years old you know mm -hmm. these kids like moaning and groaning about it. I was like what are you Boning for come on let's go he said i gotta go take a picture and a video of your trench up the hill just to show them <laughs> this is what you can do <laughs> because even for him he hasn't got and tapped into that level of just digging a trench ability you know right need a machine hydraulics mm -hmm. etc when we go again it's another example and i'm sure if you look in your own life you'll probably find similar examples but when we go fishing now I don't go fishing now, but when I used to go fishing, mm -hmm. we would be um, dragging a net on the bottom. The worst fishing, I'm sure, according to all of the environmental stuff. But it, we only drag our little net around in the sand. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we actually were doing was kind of like feeding the fish. Mm -hmm. And so if we continued to go in the same place over More a period fish. of decades... It would be more and more and more and more and more fish, not less and less and less and less. Right. So it wasn't actually deteriorative. It was contributive to the process. Right. Old technology, you know, so, geez, I've seen pictures of it in the English Channel from when they started to have boats with sails. <laughs> they had the same nets, same doors, same everything. <laughs> Nothing different. Literally the yeah. same stuff from yeah. 1500 or whatever. Well, in order for us to put our net out and our doors out, we have these hydraulic systems and pumps and spinning big reels and all that yeah. other stuff. And when I look at the pictures from when they were starting it here, they didn't have anything. No hydraulics. <laughs> just people. No electric it, systems. Man, they just had chains steering the boat. You know, your steering wheel 
it's connected and it's that big because it's hooked up to a chain that's moving the rudder. <laughs> you oh need a God. bigger leverage, you know? Yeah. Now we just have a little button to push left and right. But to put the net out, you know, picked it up and pushed it over the side of the boat piece by piece. By hand. By hand. Right. We can't even lift it on the ground onto a trailer piece by piece <laughs> without a forklift, you know? Yeah. And they're just throwing it over the side of the boat. And then when they come in to pick it up on the boat, they grab it with their hands and they pull it up. Oh, jeez. Piece with by the water piece by and piece. The and the fish. Everything. And they get to the very wow. end. And then they have a rope hooked up to the engine. You know, and Whoa. hooked up to a spinning shaft that t- attaches to the front of the engine. It's always spinning. So don't get close to it because you'll mm-hmm. get ate up by it. And they can use that to lift up the heavy part. But the point being, impossible now. It was possible then. Mm-hmm. And an impossible trench isn't actually impossible. It's just impossible by my conception of what's possible. Right. I've been raised to know how much energy does a human body have and what can it do in a day. Right. Well, it can't do very darn much mm-hmm. in, in our worldview, but it, in other worldviews, it definitely can. In other times, it could do 10 times what we're doing. So maybe it's possible that a couple hundred years ago, um, they could lift 1,000-ton bricks up <laughs> and carve stones with you know chisels and get a whole arch done in half of a day yeah i don't don't know know. it's something Mm. to look at it's something to look at that the amount of energy available to a body yeah has changed yes that's definitely true yeah and we have our viewpoints about how that came about yeah but i also remember i don't know if you remember when you were a little kid and we were little kids around the same time on the planet yeah when i was a little kid Let's say four years old, so you'd have been two. Um, I remember that, especially when I was, I remember being with my grandma, it's in my grandma's house, my grandparents' house, and we used to have breakfast, a very big breakfast. Mm-hmm. We used to have a midday, mid-morning snack, very big snack. We used to have a big lunch, and we used to have a, a, a 11, says, you know, like mid-afternoon um, snack, very large, and then we used to have tea, and then we used to have dinner, which was very big. So, and in between those times, you would get hungry because you were so busy, and the day lasted a long, long time, <laughs> really long time. Mm. And I remember thinking, my goodness, these days last so long. And I was talking to my grandma about it, and she said, "Oh, it'll it'll get fixed when you get older. Your days will get shorter." She said. Yeah, she was Everybody right. says that. Everybody says that when they grow old, the days get shorter. Right. Mm-hmm. And he, she said, and I experience it too. Nowadays, my days when I was a little kid lasted way longer than this even. She said ah, that. No way. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. And she said it was because of old age and your perception. Mm. But what if time was actually accelerating, right? Not, it wasn't because people got old that their days, days got shorter, but that everybody on the planet's days got shorter. So you have less time to do anything. I mean, look at us today. We got up really early today. Felt like it, And yeah. we have a few activities to do yet. What do we do? We watched uh, some, we did some research. Uh, we had breakfast. I just made oatmeal with apples and blueberries. Yeah, for breakfast. That was a, I checked the thing. It takes eight minutes. Mm-hmm. It took me an hour, but it takes eight minutes. Yeah. I started a fire. Yeah. And uh, it's nearly pet my dog. Day. And it's noon. Yeah, that's half the day. It is. How is that possible? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Another experience that it's it good. reminds me of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was in the 1920s, no, sorry, 1920s, 20s, 20s, 2000s, and something. 2000 and something, yeah. It was in the 2000s. And my sister-in-law and I, uh, all the, all of the families actually, we were staying in the, in our beach apartment in Spain. And, one morning, my sister-in-law and I, we stayed up talking all night. Uh, we were chatting and laughing, and everybody went to bed, and we carried on talking and laughing. We were having the best time. And then around 5 o'clock in the morning, we decided to go for a walk. Gee. Right? 
to, to watch the sunrise. So we walked out and we went to the estuary and she said, you know, I've heard that there's people who live out here and we could see like a field and, 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 um, uh, like just hills and fields. Mm. Right. So, and you can see over there, she said, like, do you see that little mound? She said, yeah, that's a house and people live in it. I said, no way. I said, right. <laughs> yeah. Impossible. Are, you, are you freaking kidding me? No, it's true. She said, but you hardly, rarely see them. I said, really? Yeah. But let's, well, well, let's test that theory, right? So what a couple of things happened. We were waiting and waiting for the sunrise. And then suddenly the sun appeared on the horizon and the river, the estuary became alive with fish. Right. Going, so, I don't know, remember, uh, back or forth. And we both went, oh, because it happened so suddenly. And then suddenly also burst a songbird, bird songs, mm -hmm. all around us. And we're like, whoa! And everything seemed to sparkle. And then suddenly, out of these little mounds in the field, all these men, that I didn't see any women, but men came out of it. Mm. Right? They were coming out of them. And we were like, whoa! What the, you know, it's like, what's happening? And one of them was really close and looked at us like frowning at us. You know, what the hell are you doing here? Kind of energy, right? Mm -hmm. And she said a hello that was really ancient, like in Spanish, but like really, really deep and projected voice. And it, was a, it wasn't the word hello, right? And she said it. And I looked at her and said, whoa, what was that? She said, that's an ancient greeting. I thought I should do it. And he responded the same way. Wow. Yeah. And he said, we better go because this is their space. Yeah. We're not meant to be here. So I said, okay. We turned around and walked back to the village. And he was like, what the, you know, you just couldn't. It was such a different world. Uh -huh, totally different so world. So different. It was like completely, like we stepped into somewhere else. And then we stepped back and went back to the village, right? Mm -hmm. And on halfway, in, when we were entering the village, my brother was in his car coming towards us. Where the hell were you both? I was very sick. I woke up in the middle of the night and you were gone and blah, blah, blah. And he got really mad, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole energy dissipated, but it was magical while it lasted and it was so different. And the way that nature responded to the sun appearing, that little bright, white, brilliant, bit of sun that appeared in the horizon and then obviously it lifted up really really fast but it's like it was so different than those people you know who were they and what, what did they do the rest of the time and <laughs> yeah it was just amazing well i think i got hit anyway i got a hit anyway about time mm -hmm. and time being sped up sped up sped up because time was a thing that we had looked at as artificial construct in yeah. a way and how are you going to know if it's faster or slower besides you know the clock's going faster or slower mm -hmm. you, you experience it going faster mm -hmm. i definitely know going slow and backwards how slow it was before <laughs> i mean it would be like oh christmas is probably 10 years from now yeah and your birthday you have your birthday once about a decade yeah how long it takes 10 years between your birthday and um the time between breakfast and lunch it's a week oh my god it lasts forever yeah it's a week yeah. are we ever going to eat again <laughs> 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 right so yeah slow to fast slow to fast and i've heard that told me plenty of times it's as you get older times goes faster yeah how do we how can you test it if it's because of your age or if it's because of I know it's not your age your because time. I've asked kids, like young kids, mm. and they're in that same fastness. Yeah. But we just got up. Where do we have to go to bed, you know? Yeah. And I never said that as a kid. No. I never said we just got up. Why do we have to go to bed? Yep. So there's there might be something with time, and there's probably manipulation with it. Because I remember, uh, well, at a very basic level, I remember playing a video game. It was a computer game in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. as a um, stock market game. Mm -hmm. And your goal of the game was to get to a million dollars by practicing investing. Mm -hmm. And so 
there was a key on it you could push to make time go faster. <laughs> so I went, you go faster for a while, and then you watch the little lines go down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And when they go down a ways, then you stop time. You buy a bunch of stuff. And you push fast again and wait a while. And then when the things go way up, then you sell your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dink, 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 dink. It's very, very easy to win that game. You just yeah. speed up time. So along that same token, you know, if you had the ability to speed things up and slow things down and speed things up and slow things down through some technology, I could see why you would do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's really boring waiting for the line to go up. Yeah. So and that line is, you know, a representation of energy, available energy. And maybe the availability of energy for stuff is variable also, you know. Mm. Uh, I think there's stuff to look at there. So maybe those two years they took to build those things in the 1800s for they us would be equivalent of 20 time. years, right? Yeah, slow the time down, build I all the stuff. 40 years. Yeah, maybe. I know that, that there is a... a um, what is it? Uh, a church, not a church. What are the big ones? Cathedral. Cathedral. It's a cathedral in Spain that was never finished when yeah. it was started, right? I remember. And it's still not finished. Still not finished. Right. That um, the Holy Family one in Barcelona. Yep. By that famous architect. It's still not finished, and it's like. How many? A hundred years now? I don't know how long it's been, but it's still not finished. <laughs> it's almost like suddenly the thing took over, the other thing took over, and you can't finish it now. Yeah, or maybe. It used to take two years to build something. Now it doesn't finish. It doesn't finish. In but the thing we were told about all these cathedrals was that it took generations, right? Mm -hmm. Two or three hundred years to build them. But the the expo world expo things are just as ornate and massive and bigger actually bigger than any cathedral on the planet yep and they took two years really mm -hmm. it doesn't nah i don't something think something isn't computing it. right no it doesn't compute yeah it does not compute well we will be continuing to look yes because it seems like a uh, one of those linchpins i think so it's like water yeah. And you're a fish, and of course the water is always the water, but you can't see the water because everything is the water, you know? Yeah. Until you start scratching at these things. They're not even things. Right. So now that we're scratching at it, you know what you don't, you don't even know that you don't know is basically part of what we're scratching up against. Right, and right. it has to do with the nature of reality and how malleable it is. Mm -hmm. And I know you teach plenty of, Understanding that reality is completely and utterly malleable, and it's an yep. experience, not a. Uh, it's less of a physical thing and more of a perception type of a thing. It's a perception for sure. Yeah. And uh, there are ways to um, drive it, control it, manipulate it, steer it, power it harder, slower, faster. All these things are variables that you can have some control of, mm -hmm. but only if you even only if you even understand you can mm -hmm. and uh much like uh learning to wiggle your ears wiggle your ears <laughs> yeah some people like they can wiggle their ears and other people they look at their ears from their eyes and they try to turn their ears around backwards to get their <laughs> ears to go and it just doesn't go there's no line from your brain to your ear to make it wiggle right <laughs> yeah but there is i think it's possible everyone can but again how do you train it Mm. The, uh, all these things are worth uh, investigating. It's like le this this conversation's in my mind about expanding your understanding of what's possible mm -hmm. and look at it. Once you know enough of us look at it, there might be a reason that all of the buildings have domes and spires and flags, flags and balls yeah. on top of them, and yeah. and maybe those are the devices that manipulate time a little bit. Could be, yeah. Could or pyramids. Be. Remember, I, that's another thing. I was looking at the pyramids, how they were built and all that. I mean, I think they've, many times we've heard it solved the problem, how they built those pyramids. They're not that hard. Yeah, there were billions of slaves and whatnot. Uh -huh. So the, it wasn't too long ago that a delegation of Japanese went to go try it out uh -huh. to see if they could build one. Uh -huh. 
they were going for, I think, 30 meters or 20 meters. Mm -hmm. and, and the real uh, ones are what meters? 100 or more, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. They're really tall. They're very tall, yeah. They're, they, would, they went to try to build one much, much, much smaller, but same size blocks. Right. Using the techniques that they, they believed they did yeah. with the sand ramp and mm -hmm. people pulling on it and yeah. all this stuff, you know. And there wasn't any step that they had conceived of that actually worked. <laughs> None of them. The they blocks, they the just size, forget it. They couldn't get them out of there. They couldn't even get them out of the quarry. Oh my goodness. They had to make them a lot, lot smaller just to get them to move out of the quarry. And then oh, getting one on the boat, the reed boats that they had conceived of, impossible. <laughs> it's like they the wouldn't boat. float. They had to have to use a regular barge, big barge. <laughs> and in order to get them up the thing, just pulling them and dragging them, forget it. They ended up needing cranes. And they didn't have cranes big enough in the entire world to lift a thingy right. at the time. So they mm -hmm. had to like make the block smaller again. And then they had to decide, well, you know, we can't do this. 20 meters thing how about just 10 <laughs> everything every single step of everything had to be altered in wow. order to fit what they could actually manage mm. and that was a whole a whole you know it was a very big project yeah and they couldn't finish it which goes to show that if they can do it can't do it today that technology wasn't what was used to build the pyramids yeah it wasn't slaves and guards and barges made of clay or whatever. I mean, it's hay or whatever, right? Yeah, it didn't work that way. Something mm -hmm. else going on. Yeah. That reminds me of the moon thing. I was just reading a meme yesterday. It's kind of a, almost in the same way related to some of the things we're talking about. I think it might so, be a little yeah. different, but it was an astronaut quote. And, you know, if we could go back to the moon, I'd go back in a nanosecond, but we don't have the technology anymore. <laughs> We don't have the technology anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, we don't have the technology. Can't do it. And also, like, the, um, but if, all of the moon stuff. Yeah. All of the pictures, all of the stuff that NASA held is yeah. all lost. All lost, yeah. They don't know what building all it's the, in. Yeah, all the blueprints and all the boats. They I mean, lost it the, all. The, the, the ships or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I can't verify that. I didn't go tall up NASA and say, hey, where's your moon stuff? And they said, oh, we lost it. I did read it. Uh -huh. Could be true, could be not true. But I do remember hearing I uh, would like to do a moon project, but we, we don't have the ability right now. Sort of like, I'd like to build a pyramid, but we really can't. <laughs> it's a similar feel, right? It is very similar, yeah. Right. Yeah. If, yeah, because if there isn't a crane big enough to pull one of those originally sized stones to build the pyramid right yeah. now, how come we don't have that technology now? If it if it was there thousands of years ago. Well, like, well, well, well. <laughs> if you can. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, what else have we forgotten, with, huh? Yeah, what else have we forgotten? But how much, when we ask about something, like, I would like a stone arch, uh, you know, entryway onto our hill house. Okay. I would like gargoyles on the corners. Mm -hmm. And I would like um, water squirting. Mm hmm with some lights, floodlights that goes in the water and changes color. Uh -huh. Kind of like, you know, Vegas. Uh -huh. And I would like, um, at the top, maybe a 30-foot tall gold statue of Archangel Gabriel. Okay. And I would like it to speak. Maybe gold The interview with an angel. <laughs> okay. The book come out of a speaker, some of the narrative. You know. mm. And also, if it's not too much trouble, a clock on one corner that has marching things. Okay. That march around and do, 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 it's noon, do, 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 then goes back in kind of. Okay. Uh, and yeah, gold, sure, gold plated things, but also silver plated things. Okay. And um, let's see. Marble, but I, you know, 
don't use the marble over here. Can we get some marble from, you know, the other side of the planet, please? Italy? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. All right. I'd like it, you know. Next week. Next week or at least next month. I'm not going to wait forever. Right, exactly. How much would it cost? Right. <laughs> and can you do it? <laughs> the answer we would clearly get is the amount of money is irrelevant because there isn't enough money to pay for what it is that you're asking for. You right. can't get it. Mm -hmm. So there's something that needs looked at. Yes, definitely. So will you look? Look at it? Yeah. Yeah, we should look at it. So when we say look at it, we're not like an island. Mm -hmm. We would look at it. I would like other people in our, um, you know, like you're listening to this. Look at it, too. And when you say look at it, what do you mean by look at it? You mean me? Sure. Well, what do you mean you? Uh-huh. And anybody else who's listening? When we say look at it, what do you mean look at it? What do you mean by that? To me, it feels like become aware of it, first of all. Okay. And see that it's interesting. And see that it's interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm aware and I'm interesting. And then put your focus on it. Be interested. Yeah. for And be willing and open to receive information, data, and uh, facts, hints, whatever, mm -hmm. from the larger environment and yourself too. So allow it to hold your interest and allow information to come, however it is. Mm -hmm. And go out and actively search for information too. You, so mm -hmm. you will have tools, right? Like the internet, we can also research there. Right. And have a look at as many viewpoints about it as you possibly can. And as you see the viewpoints, you can truth it. Use a truth in exercise from the truth in class at mm -hmm. ineliabenz.com and see which ones resonate as, yeah, this is yeah. close or this, are is, accurate. this I, is accurate. Here's a thing to look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's a thing to follow up more mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And uh, I wonder how what tools you can use to help help it stay in your awareness long enough to get to an answer without having other things like, oh my God, you know what's so important? <laughs> I, I really got to go wash the camper, honey. Yes, I don't have time for looking at this. Oh yes, tons of times. <laughs> so what, what kind of things can help you remember to place it on? All right. Oh, that's right. That's this interesting thing, an interesting thing to look at. It's um, shrouded in mystery, it's shrouded in obfuscation, and it's shrouded in your interest will be redirected. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. Yeah. So acknowledge that from the start, and then apply yourself for a week at least, right? At least, yeah, definitely. At least a week, yeah. and report what you're finding and some of the links that you're getting right. into a place where the rest of us can, you know, maybe access it. You can make yeah. a thread on... This is perfect for a thread on Walk With Me Now, actually. Yeah, it would be. Very perfect for Walk With Me Now. But if you're you not in Walk With Me Now, yeah. you can go to Telegram, in the Nelly Benz channel on Telegram. Put it there. Or you could do Subscribe Star. Yep, Subscribe Star. Subscribe Star has mm -hmm. a Telegram comment. chat also yeah. that you can like engage with each yep. other on. And it has its own comment thread. Right. Subscribe Star has a second hour where I can't wait to see what kind of research Ilya and Adelina do. Yeah. Some of the questions that they bring hour. up. <laughs> because they do exist from a different era, a different world than us in a way. They do. Right? Yeah. Other side of the planet, mm -hmm. a completely different political system, education system. I mean, kind things around of. the world are different, but they're, they're getting kind mushy of, all together. Yeah. But they're, same they're cars, still... same schools, same degrees, <laughs> same com computer languages. I remember yeah. we were talking in our second hour about yeah. the same telephone game mm -hmm. in a circle. Yes. How is that possible? That every the game school on that the planet. we played in third, fourth grade is the same that they played on the yeah. other side of the planet. And I did too. Behind yeah. the Iron Curtain, so to speak. Yeah. And you played also across the freaking planet in yeah. another whole, whole different system. Right. We all played the same game. That was, if you don't know, it was the uh, Whispers game, the circle where you have... Ten or everyone in class would say the same thing or say whatever they thought was the same thing to the person's ear. Yeah. And then at the end, we would hear what it was that, you know, 
what ended what up the message was at the, end. at the start was one thing and at the end what it ended up being right. and how unrelated it was yeah and then they told you see see word of mouth word is of mouth. not good cannot trust it not you can only trust can trust it. what's written exactly so that invalidates every single native culture on the planet all instantly. stories of oral mm -hmm. which incidentally uh our entire culture here northwest coast is oral <laughs> was oral and it had a way to remember it yes so that it couldn't be altered yeah first of all the that exercise we did as kids was completely wrong because in a co oral culture you listen to the story a million times you from your it. elders so you know it word by word yeah. and also only certain people are attracted to learning that learning and the skill learning to it, tell the story yeah and they learn it word by word they're called storytellers right and they don't change it. No. Right? So it's not like a little whisper that you whisper into somebody's ears. You can hardly hear it. And you don't have that skill. And the majority of those kids don't have the skill. Right? Yep. And I can remember it's like you have to say it once. You can't say it twice. <laughs> and you can't ask clarification or anything. You just hear what you hear. Yep. And then you pass it along. Which is yep. completely opposite to how oral history works. Mm -hmm. But it's still invalidated in all our minds, you know, all yeah. around the world in schools. If you're interested in hearing more about that, I suggest you go to that subscribe star. Yes. <laughs> Listen yeah. to our two. Listen to our walk with two. You now. Walk with you now has the hour two as well. Yeah. If you go to walk with you now, you can get it. You can go to subscribe star and get it. Either way, look at it with us. Look yeah. at it with us. We're, it. we're a certain group of people. Yeah. We have an expanded set of awarenesses we do we're not islands no we're not our islands. expanded awareness includes your expanded awareness exactly uh you're not alone mm -hmm. and we aren't either so let's look at this together and figure it out yeah do you remember what it was we we're looking at together honey um no <laughs> time <laughs> yeah maybe we should write that down <laughs> what honey I guess you're going to have to listen to this podcast again. <laughs> okay, sounds good to me. Good. Okay, love you, honey. Love you, darling.